Good morning, Owen. Uh, it's very nice to see you and thank you very much to uh, for agreeing to do this interview too, all about risk quantification and its importance in particular for BV loss operations. So can you start off by telling me a bit about yourself and, and why that is relevant to what you're doing here? Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot for, for for having me. Happy to happy to be here. So, a bit of background to me, I guess, first as to you know where, where this all came about. So, I've got background in aerospace engineering, um, sort of ten years in sort of more the research space. And in that time, I spent a lot of time working on you know just building drones and writing software for them, and then all the way through to actually figuring out how we use them in the real world and actually using them for things like wildlife conservation. That was a you know big part of work that I did, which involved you know flying over longer distances working with aviation authorities to get you know approvals to do those sorts of things um and working with regulators in lots of different countries you see lots of different approaches to risk um and one of them aligned quite closely with the whole research topic that I did uh, many years ago which is this approach of quantifying risk um yeah. and from what i've observed you know from operating in these these multiple um jurisdictions when you take a quantitative approach to risk as opposed to qualitative and I'm sure we talk about the differences of those as we go through but uh, yeah when you take that more quantitative approach it gives you much more opportunity to scale your operations um, and so obviously particularly people looking at doing BB loss operations you know a lot of that is things like parcel deliveries and, and, and stuff like this where you know if you just do one flight it's not really commercially viable you need to sort of scale this to a, to a, a large degree to make the, the commercials make sense and that's why I'm kind of wanting to yeah, support the industry where I can really and try and upskill people more in this quantification side of things. And that's the, the whole uh, driving force really behind why we're doing this training course. Excellent. And that actually is particularly relevant because Amazon yesterday announced that they will be that's starting right, yeah. their drone delivery flights uh, as of the end of 2024. So this really is, it's very timely. Exactly. Um, yeah. yeah. So What's, in your opinion, the state of play for BV loss in the UK at the moment? Why do we need this course? Sure. So BV loss in the UK at the moment is really constrained to, you know, closed off pieces of airspace. You know, they've got they've got different names. You know, there's either danger areas or transponder mandatory zones or this new TRA concept. You know, there's, there's different names around it. Um, but it's all really facilitating trials of BV loss. There's no real straightforward approach right now to say, right, we've got an approval to go and do, you know, parcel delivery anywhere in the UK. You know, there's, there's just no route to that. Um, and that's in part because, you know, the regulations need to catch up. You know, the regulator needs to understand, you know, how to deal with this sort of step at scale. It's a very different space to the traditional manned approach. Um, but it's also in part because the drone operators don't necessarily have the, the, the skill sets to be able to go to the regulator and produce a, a convincing safety argument. So you get this sort of chicken and egg situation where, the regulations aren't quite there yet, but industry aren't really supporting the regulator. The industry are kind of sitting back and sort of saying, regulator, please tell us what to do. Um, and, you know, that's a perfectly valid approach, but the regulator doesn't know either. You know, there's this th th this needs to be more organic, uh, you know, all working together, really. And um, I think this is really what I'm trying to help with with this training program is to give industry the confidence to go to regulator and make these more challenging more complicated safety arguments which is exactly sort of leads into the next question if we want to solve bv loss in the uk what's missing and by the sounds of things you're saying that we need to be thinking about this risk and taking it to the cea and and talking that through is that just one element of it um yes yeah, so there is you know when we talk about the the risks associated with bv loss you know when you actually break that down what we're talking about with this training course is how you go about articulating those risks, you know, in terms of, you know, what's the probability an aircraft will crash, you know, the, the, those sorts of things, how you go about articulating those. But actually, if you look at the state of play today in terms of where the technology is, where some of the sort of pilot competency is, et cetera, that might not actually be there. So when we do this quantification exercise, we might find actually, no, we're not safe. You know, we need to work on whether it's, you know, detect and avoid, whether it's pilot competency, whether it's, you know, electronic conspicuity, all these different technologies but it will by 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 taking this approach to looking at the the risk assessment first rather than saying here's the technology now let's try and do a safety case coming in and saying actually what is the risk of what we're trying to do and then following that breakdown and again this is this is what i'm going to go through on this this training course is how you then break that down to say actually our operation is really really sensitive to how good our detect and avoid system is 
And we don't think today, or the regulator doesn't think today, that that system's good enough. And therefore, we need to invest time and effort in developing that. You know, it gives us it gives us the prioritization, really, by taking that risk first approach. Um, because otherwise, you risk, for example, spending a lot of time training up your pilots. But then when you do the risk budget, you realize, actually, the pilot's not necessarily the one going to be operating the aircraft a lot because it's going to be highly automated, highly autonomous. So having that really skilled pilot doesn't really move the risk needle very much. It doesn't get us any significant benefit in risk. And I'm not saying that is true for every drone operation. It's just an example. But um, yeah, having that sort of risk first approach really lets us prioritize where the other work areas and other work streams might might be needed to support what we're doing. So we recently held a kickoff meeting around BV loss. It was our BV loss technical special interest group. Right. Yeah. Um, it was really well supported. What did you find the participants said and what came out of that workshop? Yeah, so a, a real key thing when we went into that workshop was I wanted to get everyone kind of, you know, sort of blue sky thinking, you know, don't blink yourself with what the regulations say today. Don't blink yourself with your particular operating concept. You know, let's just come into this blue sky and say, you know, if we're wanting to do BB loss, what are the things stopping us doing it? Now, we're all intelligent people. We don't want to injure people. We don't want to crash into planes. You know, we don't need the rules to tell us not to do that. We know that. So, you know, how would we just go about tackling this if we had a clean slate and a, and a clean sheet of paper? And the really important kind of finding that came out from that, and it was, like you say, it was a really well attended and well engaged um, day from you know across the, the spectrum of industry really and the real kind of takeaway for me was the realization that yeah hang on this is quite difficult you know the, the arguments that we, we want to make these really complicated arguments to the regulator because we want the most broad permission to operate you know we want to be able to fly, do this everywhere in the uk we don't want to have to wait for an approval every time we want to do a new flight now we want to just be able to have a broad brush and be able to do this but to do that the level of confidence the regulator is going to need is going to be so high and we as industry or we as you know service providers into industry or, or we as operators etc don't necessarily have the confidence to be able to do that don't necessarily have the skill sets you know in-house to be able to do that and that despite that, that fact that might sound a bit negative that's actually that was a really positive takeaway for me because that really reinforces you know why i'm putting this training program together you know because that's what i'd observed in kind of uk drone industry but I hadn't had them explicitly tell me that. And it, it was nice to, you know, have that day with people to kind of walk them through this and, and really get that feedback that, you know, this risk quantification stuff, one is important and two is difficult. So now that, that really, you know, bolsters me in terms of, no, I know, I know why I'm doing this now, which is great. Fantastic. Um, what's missing with the current approach that's being undertaken with existing safety cases? So the, the existing um, approach to safety cases within the drone industry, kind of within, let's call it, let, let's, sorry to misuse the terminology, but let's be specific. We're really talking here about the specific category operators today, um, is that the approach that you take to, to risk there is much more of a qualitative approach. You know, this this whole claim argument evidence kind of breakdown is how you do it. Those are very much, you know, the, the, those claims and arguments and things are written down as sentences, you know, constructed by people that, that seem sensible. Um, now, one of the challenges with that is it's quite subjective. So one person might write something and think, oh, that's a, that's a bulletproof you know, statement. Nobody can argue against that. But somebody else coming at it with a different set of experience and a different background might say, actually, I don't agree with that. Or I think you, it doesn't say what you think it says. You know, it might it might mean something else to somebody with a different background. Um, and also, it's a really difficult approach to scale. So, for example, if you've got a safety case to do a trial and then that trial goes successfully, you might say, oh, great. Well, that safety case now means I can go and do this a thousand times all over the UK, for example. But actually, no, because you're now a thousand times riskier just purely because you're doing it a thousand more times. There's a thousand more chances you're going to have an accident, um, et cetera. And it's really difficult to update that risk assessment in a defensible way to say, actually, we do now have more information. We do have more data. You know, we do have these thousands of flight hours. You, again, you can write that in as a sentence, but, you know, the, the the standard thing that you can always come back and say, well, yes, okay, you did a thousand flight hours, let's say, but maybe on the thousandth and one, you would have had an incident and you don't know that. Um, so unless you've actually done the more sort of data-driven approach to safety and actually gone down, you know, the sort of statistical approach to these things, and rather than putting in very wordy safety arguments, putting in actual numerical ones, that say, you know, this is our risk to 
you know, this is our risk of having an accident. This is a risk that then that, that accident involves a third party. Um, and once you can actually, you know, demonstrate those probabilities are sufficiently low, then, you know, it's a much more straightforward safety case to, to make to the regulator. That being said, that assumes that, you know, the regulator is open to this kind of thing and all of that. And that's where we get into things around SORA and stuff that I'm sure we'll talk about shortly. Exactly. Well, funnily enough, exactly. Um, is this just about explaining SORA? No, it's kind of the opposite, really. So I'm not really going to be talking about SORA in this course, other than just to provide some context. So I think SORA is definitely a move in the right direction for, for the industry. Um, it is going to enable a lot more um, things to happen. And as I'm sure people who are following it know, SORA is also constantly evolving and constantly you know, changing and advancing. And the fundamental principles behind the SORA methodology align perfectly with what I'm talking about here. You know, it is a move towards more quantification of risk to allow the industry more freedoms to to operate but actually if you look at the the breakdown for sorry 2.5 for example where they look at quantified ground risk the approach they take there is perfect it's, it's exactly what i'm going to be going through on this course because for somebody that doesn't have a background in you know statistics or academia it's a bit baffling so i'm mean, you know i'm going to explain so that hopefully the industry can can follow this development as well but actually some of the assumptions made in there might not actually apply to particular drone operations you know a particular drone of a certain size operating in a particular area or a particular type of airspace those assumptions might not apply to you so you can use if, if you understand the methodology you can go through that methodology yourself and say actually i'm going to change that number because i've got this experience or i've got this particular aircraft or i've got this particular operating environment and so i get a different number out at the end i don't just get the standard risk class that sora tells me i get something else and that's one of the things that is built into SORA is the ability for operators to go to that next level and not just follow the flow chart, but actually say, no, 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 we don't agree with this and we don't agree with that. But I do think there's a bit, and to, to, to use the phrase that this that this whole funding uh, thing came from, I do think there is a bit of a skills gap in a lot of the operators' ability to look at SORA, you know, Annex F, for example, which is like 60 odd pages of probability, which, you know, I struggle to understand it sometimes and and I feel for the industry trying to go through that themselves. So um, this is, you know, this is the purpose of this course is to support that. So no, it's very much not just walking you through SORA, but it's upskilling in the techniques that underpin SORA so that when it comes out for consultation in the UK, you know, the industry will be in a much better place to be able to, you know, critically assess that and and, and implement it. Fantastic. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um how can this course help me get BV loss? Hmm. Well, the course in itself is really to sort of prime the way of thinking, if you like. So it's to move into this. Think about risk first. Think about, you know, how you then assess risk numerically, how you break it down to the various parts of your operations, etc. So as I mentioned before, it's in the first instance, it's about kind of prioritizing what you do, you know. Should your particular operation be focused 100% on detection and avoid? Well, no, because you're only flying at 50 feet. So the chance of inter in, um, in, in coming into contact with other aircraft is so low, we'll, we'll focus things on something else. So, you know, it's really, it starts off as kind of an internal piece within your organization, within your, you know, operation to kind of just tell you what you should be doing. But then in parallel with that, you've got even separate to SORA, actually, you've got the CAA now starting to move towards this quantified approach. If you look at their TRA sandbox work, where they're looking at their approach to air risk and how they go about assessing an operator's air risk profile, it is very much a quantified approach. And they're using a lot of stuff that was done in the, by the standards bodies in the US, uh, like RTCA and ASTM. They're using a lot of those newly formed standards, which all come down to looking at things like encounter rates and risk ratios and all of these sorts of things, which again, I think, that I was, I was on a call, you know, that where the CAA were explaining this, and I've spoken to some operators who were on that call since, and there was a little bit of confusion as to this whole approach. Um, and so if the CAA is starting to move in this direction, we need to support the industry to move in that direction as well, so that when the regulator's ready to accept these arguments, which they're not quite yet, they're getting there, but they're not quite there yet, um, the operators are actually in the, the right place to be able to make those arguments. And then everyone you know comes together at the end and we all do BB loss and everyone's happy. That's the that's the that's the sort of goal that we're all aiming for. 
Indeed it is. We've we've spent numerous years talking BB loss and, and how it will unlock the UK. So yes, absolutely. Uh, yes, absolutely. Um if I do this course, does that mean I'm guaranteed BV loss? I think Absolutely that's probably not. a really crucial <laughs> question for, for those wanting to attend or looking to attend yeah. the course. No, no, absolutely not. It doesn't, it doesn't guarantee anything. So there's two two parts to that, but uh, yeah, two parts to that really. One is that this course is very much introductory, you know, it's to get people thinking in the right kind of mindset. And if you're a relatively simple operator, for example, let's say BV loss to you means you just want to be able to fly behind a building while you're doing a structural inspection. You don't want to have to follow the drone around or have spotters or anything like that, where you're very constrained volume, very, you know, low risk. Then possibly, you know, the tools and techniques that you learn on this course would be sufficient to allow you to put a safety argument to the regulator to, to be able to, you know, operate BB loss. One, again, it depends on, you know, your ability to do that once you go away from the course. You know, we'll, we'll teach you the tools, but, you know, you still need to then implement it and do that safety case yourself. And two, it depends on, you know, the the reception from the regulator. And I think if you go to them today, you'll probably get some pushback on this. But, you know, three months, six months as, as they start to advance. Um, and another part that I want to try and get out of this course is actually if you've got the operator starting to think with this mindset and starting to approach the regulator with this mindset, hopefully these things will start to align. Because, you know, there is work within the regulators with this sort of way of thinking. But that's not necessarily the people that will be looking at your OSCs if you submit them today. So it's, it's getting all of that work that's already going on within the regulator, paralleling it in industry, because, again, I don't really see it happening in industry right now. And that's why, I'm, you know, trying to support it on that side to make sure that we all kind of come together at, at the end. But just the just the, the other piece on that is, like I say, this is only an introductory course. If you're a complicated operator, like if you're somebody who's wanting to do hundreds of thousands of drone deliveries over the UK, rather than someone just doing that small structural inspection task, chances are precisely what I'm going to cover in this course is not going to be sufficient to get you over the, the hurdle. I'm going to be alluding to a lots of tools and techniques that, you know, you could spend weeks on as a, as a, as a training program. This could almost be an entire like master's degree if you wanted to, you know, expand it out into to cover mm -hmm. absolutely everything. Um, but really it's just to, you know, prime the thinking, get people thinking in the right sort of way, get people off going off and, you know, doing their own research into these tools and techniques. Maybe they don't need to listen to me talking to them for weeks, but they can actually, you know, find it out themselves. Um, but it's really just yeah kind of kick off the way of thinking really do you do you think do you know whether the CAA at the moment are receiving sort of applications with this risk analysis behind it I obviously can't know that for certain but I don't mm -hmm. think there's many people going that route because the CAA have been quite clear in in, in the recent past that their acceptable means of compliance is to follow what's in cap 722 mm -hmm. And that's fine, actually. You can take a more quantitative approach within the CAP722 framework, but CAP722 doesn't really lead you in that direction. It kind of leads you in the opposite direction to simplify the safety case process, but also then very much constrain the approval that you're going to get out of that. So I don't imagine most operators are trying to innovate in the risk assessment space, shall we say, because CAP722 doesn't really lend lead, lead you to be aiming to be able to do that okay that's interesting okay i think that's covered most of the questions i've got here at the moment uh the final right. one what makes you qualified to tell me that what i'm doing is wrong oh right Fair. Clearly, not, i don't starters, find myself but yeah yeah um, for, for, for starters i'm not telling you anything that you're doing is wrong um mm -hmm. i'm just saying you know you're 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 doing something today that allows your business to work at a certain level and at a certain scale mm -hmm. um you know if you want to you know take that more broadly i believe that these are a set of tools that you know can help you there and the reason i have that belief is one you know after basically 10 years worth of research in this space i published a lot of publications that have then been cited by the standards bodies who are writing the rules for the future and all of this and then following on from that research uh, experience i've actually done this practically you know i've been i've worked in a number of different countries in terms of different aviation authorities some military authorities some civilian authorities with this more quantitative approach and yeah sometimes you know you get to the regulator and they're like oh okay we've not seen this before let's go through it let's have a conversation let's work through it but then you end up in in a very nice place at the end where you do get you know much more broad brush to operate rather than very specific approvals so um yeah it's a it's a belief that i have that this will support industry but i'm very much not saying the industry are doing the wrong thing that's the, that's definitely not the case
Well, that's great. I think that covers an all all reasons for doing the course. Um, mm. Clearly, we are looking forward to seeing people on the courses. We're holding them in Stoke-on-Trent, South Wales, Edinburgh and London to ensure that we can get out and about. The courses themselves will be free for RPAS members, one, one place per organisation. And that if people want to uh, arrange to send more people, then that they need to have a conversation with us uh, to support that in a different way. Which is great. Okay. Well, thank you very much, Owen. We'll look forward to seeing no, you on the well. courses ourselves. And yeah, I'm really um, looking forward to getting out today. there. Really looking forward to getting out there and doing a bit of a bit of a tour of the country and um, getting out and uh, yeah, helping the operators any way I can. That's great. Well, thank you very much. Great. Thank you.